A very warm welcome to the World of Lord Russell podcast show. And today's show is Seasons of My Life, which captures the life of a tenacious and highly talented midfield player applying his genius at Bradford Park Avenue, Wolverhampton Wanderers, Seattle Sounders, albeit on loan, Coventry City and Bristol Rovers, also as manager for Walsall, Cardiff City and Hensford Town. Yes, folks. It gives me great pleasure to welcome onto the show, Kenny Hibbett. Welcome to the show, Kenny. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. It really is. You, you've done so much research on you and a, a, a huge life in football. It's fantastic. This show is going to be awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm really looking forward to this. So you started your professional uh, football career at a senior level uh, with your hometown club, Bradford Park Avenue, in January 1968. And at that time, the club were in trouble at the foot of League Division 4. I do remember it. So yes, what, was it like at, yeah, what was it like at Bradford Park Avenue in your first season as a professional player? Well, um, to be fair, I wasn't a professional player. I was an apprentice. Oh, OK. Yeah, and um, so when I was 15, I had a choice of... A few clubs in in the uh, Yorkshire areas, um, but I always, as a kid growing up, went to Bradford City one week and Bradford Park Avenue the next week. So I was very fortunate that I had a game every week to to a team to support. But Bradford Park Avenue was my my favourite team out of the two. And yes. um, so when I left school, I played for obviously I played for Bradford Boys and Yorkshire Boys, and uh, the scout picked me up and I went as an apprentice. But I was the only apprentice there for about a year, 15 months. So I, I had to go back on a Tuesday and Thursday evenings to do some training because I didn't have time to do any training during the day. Having 25 pairs of boots to clean, put the kit out for them in the morning, take it out after finishing training, drying it, getting it ready for the afternoon. And I was several times, I woke up in the uh, bus depot. I was so tired. <laughs> I, missed, I missed my stop, yeah. Um, so that's how it all, all, all really took off. And then I, I broke into the first team at, at 16 um, because the, the team was struggling, as you said earlier. Yeah. So that they were bottom of the league. Um, it was a bad time for Bradford Park having you. Um, but I managed to break into the first team. And um, and then at 17, my, I lost my father, who had a um, severe heart attack. Oh, he sorry to only, hear that. He was only 40 years of age. And oh, wow. um, he seemed my brother... Progress at Leeds. He was at Leeds United, Terry. Um, and he wanted to see me progress from the lower. And then um, if I was good enough uh, to see me progress into uh, a higher club level. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't there to see that. Yeah. Before, it was um, it was a tough it was a tough uh, apprenticeship, uh, I have to say, for two, two years, two and a bit years, actually. And um, I, I really I nearly packed it in, to be fair. Um, right. because I, I wasn't getting any. I had to go back Tuesday and Thursday, as I said, training with the amateurs, which I didn't mind, but I, it, it was getting a bit of... Um, I was rolling the pitch, a lightweight roller. Oh. When the when the rain came down, the mud on the pitch, and I was walking up and down. It was teaming down the rain. I've got the, grounds, the, 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 the groundsman watching me with a cup of tea in his hand. Um, and I went home, and I just I just felt that it was too much for me. I, did, I just didn't fancy it. Anyway, I stuck with it. And then um, Wolves came knocking on the door and uh, at 17, I wasn't sure. I was an apprentice, but I wasn't sure that I wanted to leave my mother. Um, mm. My brother Terry were living away in Leeds. My, I, my mother and my sister was there and I didn't want to leave. But she said, look, this is what your dad always wanted to see. He wanted to see both of you playing in the first division. So... Um, when the chance came, I, I took it. I, I went into Bradford, got on the train down to Wolverhampton. Geographically, I didn't know where it was. I have to be. I have to say. Uh, and every time we stopped the train, I went to get off and go home. But I kept going, and I think my dad had to push me on that one. Yeah, um, sounds like I, it. Yeah, and I got to Wolverhampton, and um, Joe Gardner, who was the chief scout, met me, took me to digs, and it all started from there. Yeah. Oh, by, the way, by the way, it was the. Um, Ronnie Allen signed me, but I'd been under about five managers in two and a half years at Bradford. Yeah. And um, it happened again. He signed me and he got, he got sacked three days later. Oh, I've got a few more stories of that coming on yeah, the show so as well a bit later I think, on. I mean, yeah. it was terribly sad for your home team. Just say you supported 
uh, Bradford Park Avenue. And finishing yeah. bottom of Division Four in 1968, they did a colossal points difference as well. And of course, yeah. having to reapply for re-ele- you know, re-election to stay in the league for the next season, and they were duly re-elected, which is good. In fact, Bradford Park Avenue, I think, finished bottom again for the next two seasons, yeah. and were eventually replaced by Cambridge United. I mean, you must have had mixed feelings after all. They were your home club. That's awful, isn't it? When the oh, I did. Goes I down. did. I did have mixed feelings, uh, Russell. There, but the, the, I mean, we just sold Kevin Exeter to, Bra- to Derby County, mm. and um, what well, good player he was he, too. Oh, fantastic player! Mm. And when I, when I used to feel for the ball behind the goals when the first team were practicing, I was always hoping that Kevin would get the ball because he hit the back of the net. I didn't have to go running for it to, <laughs> to collect it. But the others were all over the place, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I went to Bra for five grand. It kept him going for a little bit longer. And they didn't really want to sell me, they said. But that five grand was, it kept them going for another season. Um, yeah, it would have done, wouldn't it? Was, it was sad to see them go, you know, out of the Football League uh, from a distance at the time. And uh, Yeah. But I have to, they, they still exist now. Uh, they're still around. Um, so I have to be thankful for them for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, because you, you did have 15 appearances for Bradford Park Avenue, you didn't you? Yeah, never, never on the winning side. Oh, I know. Well, of course, they're always losing every week, you know, massive, yeah, massive defeats right. too. Um, when you, that your transfer to Wolves happened in November 1968, and you're quite right, you know, suddenly at Wolverhampton Wanderers, you were in the top flight of, of English football, the same as your brother, brother Terry, of course, mm. who was playing in the first division then. I mean, you, you must have felt your footballing days were hitting the heights, Kenny. That's incredible because Wolves were a fantastic side going back, weren't they? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I knew of them I, I, because of the 50s and 60s. Um, I knew the way that we wore the, the gold and black, and they always looked strong and powerful, you know. Yeah. With Billy Wright as well, who was captain of England many, many times. Peter Broadbent, Johnny Hancock, uh, Jimmy Mullen. There was all, there's some fantastic players there. And when I joined, I mean, I'd left a club with only 20 professionals. I went to mm. Wolves and got 42 professionals. Yeah, so big I ended difference. up in the reserve dressing room. But it was a wonderful club. I used to look at the pictures on the, on, you know, all the, um, successful teams and I always wanted to be part of that and the history of the club uh, yeah. try to emulate it and, and what they had done and achieved and that was my that was my driver that was that what drove me to, to you know mm-hmm. to be to try to break into the first team and, and Absolutely. be a successful footballer and break in you did your, your debut for Wolverhampton Wanderers was as a substitute in a yeah. 1-0 defeat to rivals West Bromwich. I've been never going to be taken very well that, is it, by, by Wolves supporters? Yeah. I think in April 1969. What do you yeah. what do you remember most about your debut for Wolves, Kenny? What was, what was that well, like? That, that, I came on the pitch and I didn't realise that one of our great, one of the, one, he would have been a great player for us and for him, was Peter Knowles, mm. who was brother Cyril player for the Tottenham, as you know. Um, and I, I, I didn't know he was on the field. When I only came, I only went on for 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, and it was a, it was a fantastic feeling, but not not when we got beat, obviously against against the local uh, local, local team rivals. But then Bill McGarry gave me my full debut at Chelsea. Yes, he did. And he told me on a Friday night, um, and I never slept a wink that night. That was in and, September uh, nineteen seventy, wasn't it? That's right. And you um, scored your your first yeah. many goals in a two two draw at Chelsea, didn't you? Really, it and, was. Uh, yeah, I scored the first goal. Yeah, I remember a corner. Peter Bonetti, the great keeper. Oh, uh, wonderful! Bonetti fella, came yes. out and he thumped the ball out to the edge of the box, and I and I hit it first time, left foot in the bottom corner, and it was oh. so wet. I mean, we walked out the tunnel, and it was like walking in, through a shower. Uh, yes. I mean, un, under a shower, it was so strong. The pitch got soaking wet, a bit muddy, and I think that helped my yeah, when I hit it, it skidded on the on the floor, and it, and it went past him. But that was. Again, it was a, a, a terrific feeling. You must have been elated. I mean, to, to oh. uh, silence the Chelsea supporters as well. <laughs> it would have been quite vocal, wouldn't they, in those days? Yeah, well, that must have been a great feeling. Yeah. yeah, was there many Wolves fans there at the time to celebrate your goal? Uh, not as many as there would be now. Mm. Uh, and not many as there would have been probably in the mid-70s and 80s. But uh, it was, it, for me, it was a dream. Uh, I, I can't remember much about the game apart from the goals took out and I remember uh, the draw and I remember the rain coming down as we walked yes. down the, two, the old Stamford Bridge ground yes. fantastic fantastic place it was just uh, it was just a dr- I, I was waiting to wake up to be to be honest with you um, yeah. and I woke up Sunday morning and, I, and it had all happened and it was in the papers and you'd score and it, and- yeah yeah a little snotty nose kid from Bradford playing for Wolves at Chelsea it was um, 
it was um yeah it start that that was the start of it i just wanted them to stay in the side i enjoyed it so much yeah and stay in the side you did of course yeah fantastic yeah. Uh, career I mean, during your time at Molyneux, Kenny, you you won the League Cup in 1974 at Wembley, beating Manchester City 2-1, uh, with goals from John Richards and, of course, yourself, Kenny. Nice. Um, what did it feel like, first of all, scoring at, at Wembley and, of course, winning the first piece of silverware for Wolverhampton Wanderers since lifting since they lifted the FA Cup in 1960? You must That's be right. Well, at Wembley. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, dream. As, a, as most kids growing up, I watched all the cup finals. Yes, I did. And I was out before the game. I was out at half time, and I was always being Bobby Charlton when I went outside with to play with the military. Then back in to watch the second half, and it was our both our dreams to to play at Wembley um, in the cup final. Mm. And it happened in 1974 for both of us. Terry played for Newcastle against Liverpool in '74, and I played for Wolves against Man City in '74. So it all happened the same year. Unfortunately, he got beat, and we we won. Um, but that dream came came true, and I, I, my mother, my mother was there with my sister. Yes. And when I scored, I think it was about the forty second minute. Um, she said to me after the game, "I didn't see the second half, Kenny, because my eyes were full." Oh, bless her! And she kept looking up and seeing my name up in lights. <laughs> <laughs> what a and, thrill, and mother! She, I know, and all yeah. she was thinking about was my dad. You know, he would have been so proud. Um, because we he sat with as many you know for many cup finals and I'm watching England play, um, and there and there I was on on the uh, hello turf as we used to call it. It was um, it was a it was a feeling I'll, I'll never ever forget. I've got to ask you, what was it like actually walking out onto the Wembley pitch? Because it was a long walk in those days, wasn't it? It was frightening. <laughs> Very long walk. We called all uh, the noise, uh, <laughs> all well, the cameras. I, we well we walked down it. We got into the tunnel, uh, in, and this was the old. Uh, Wembley Stadium. Yes. And I looked across to Manchester City's team. Now, they were full of class. They were. Dennis Law, and, you know, I, I can go on and on. And I can name them. And I and, and they were tossing the ball upon their head, Franny Lee, shoulder, as, as if it was in just another game. Yeah. And I looked across and I thought, my God. <laughs> We've got to play and those. I started, <laughs> you know, I started, the nerves started to rear because I was quite a nervous player before again. And um, God, I thought, gee, me, look at them. They're, they're so relaxed and yeah but then the guy called us out he said so the captain mike bailey was a fantastic captain well we walked out down the tunnel and there was fifty thousand black and gold fans yeah and suddenly all the nerves went out and um i pretended to wave up to me well i couldn't see her yeah. uh, and, my wife, and my wife was up there and uh um yeah, as soon as the whistle went, that was it. All the nerves went, and we were straight into the game. But they had a terrific, uh, a terrific team, and we were against, you know, our backs against the wall for long periods. Our defence was superb. Mm. Uh, Gary Pearce in goals had probably one of the best goalkeeper performances that I've ever seen, uh, wow. and it needed to be as well because you know with with Franny Lee and and uh, Rodney Marsh, they were literally me from everywhere. Colin Bell. But we I, and then I scored with a miss hit on on the eighth, in the four second minute. Well, a miss hit too. It doesn't matter though, does it? It went in. That's the thing. No, no. It, when it that, hit the, how did you feel when it hit the back of the net? How did how did you fit inside? You must have been. My God, I've scored. I was. Yeah, I was. I because that that dream of of playing at Wembley and then uh, and actually scoring was. Yeah. I can't remember. Somebody said to me uh, when I did a Q and A not long ago with with John Richards and Steve Daly. They said, "What did it?" What did the manager say at half time? I, I hadn't got a clue. No, I hadn't. I, I just hadn't got a clue. I were in. I were in cuckoo land. That was. You were probably still reliving your goal. Have I really done that? Is it, is it true? Have I scored? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just. It was. An, it was an incredible feeling. But a feeling, I, as I say, I, I will ever forget that. And it was like it was yesterday. It's, it's yeah. been so long, but it was like yesterday. Yeah, uh, and I'll that dream, you. dream as a kid growing up, it, it came to fruition, and. Um, and of course, the black and gold, you say 50,000 there, because in those days it was, wasn't it? It's was half and half. It was not yeah, like yeah. this today. Yeah. 50,000 black and gold supporters. I mean, the noise when that ball hit the back of the net must oh. have been absolutely uplifting. It, it was. It was. It was. Uh, words can't explain uh, the, yeah. the, the, the amazing feeling uh, of it. And, and if you ask any young player that, that scored at Wembley or played at Wembley, they'll tell mm. you exactly the same. Um, as I say, the second half went by so quick. But when Colin Bell equalised, 
I think I woke up at that time thinking, hold on, <laughs> I ain't going to win the cup. <laughs> and, then, and then John Richards, a uh, big friend of mine, um, scored in the last couple of minutes. Yes. Was um, towards the he end, had wasn't a, it? a pelvic injury and he drilled it in and, and then it, it was to walk up them, them steps yeah. and then across to get to get the trophy and, and yeah. shake hands with the Royals. And it was... Um, Something yeah. very, very special. And of course, in 66, it would have been England going up there to lift the World Cup. Exactly. Now you're up there, you know, what, some eight years yeah. later, doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. It was just a dream that had come true. Yeah. Um, and John Richards was a great player too, wasn't he? He was, a, he was good up front. Oh, he was, he's, he's an, he was an absolute diamond for us. He was strong, powerful, quick, knew where the goals were. And he was a prolific goal scorer. And um, of course, we we related in a way because his wife and my wife are cousins. So, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my father-in-law and his father-in-law who were, I mean, they've passed on since. Um, we're brothers. So, so we, we family, back right literally. Yeah. And when we go back into Wolverhampton, we stay at Willie Card and Tessa's or we go to John and Pam's. Yeah. So so we've got a very good relationship there. No, that's good to hear. That's very good to hear. Very yeah. nice. Very nice story. And of course, you also played in the League Cup final at Wembley in, in 1980. Uh, yes. This one, of course, against the reigning League Cup holders and European champions, Nottingham Forest. And you also won the game 1 0, uh, lifting the League Cup for the second time in seven years, which which was no mean feat. You know, Brian Clough's incredible Forest team, they were awesome, weren't they? Oh, How did yeah. that compare to the 74 Cup win, first of all? But beating the European champions at Wembley. It was actually it was similar because. They were European champions. They were, and, and they were full of quality players. Yes. And again, and again, um, and, and and I have to be honest that yeah, they they ran as ragged at times, but the manager made a fantastic decision. By I used to play on the right side of midfield, and of course Robertson was one of their best players on the wide. Oh, on the, what did so Brian thought, Clough used to call him the fat boy, didn't he? Exactly, but he could play. He could play. Yeah, he could play. And he swapped, he swapped me uh, from Peter Daniel, who was in the mid central midfield. He put mm. him over on the right because he was a lot quicker than I was. And I went into the centre midfield. And he, and, he, and he stifled Robertson. He sort of kept him really quiet for the night. Danger man, wasn't he? Yeah. And Peter, Peter is a 35-yard ball over the top of them when Needham and, and uh, Shilton collided. And then Andy Gray came in round behind them. He said he's ready. I said, I don't believe you, Andy. And he said, I did. I said, no, you didn't. It was a mis- They made a mistake. The ball yeah. broke and he taps it into net to net. And as he, was running, as he was running onto it, I, th- I thought, don't try and hit it with your right foot. Tap it in with your left. And he did. He tapped it in with his left because his right foot was standing on, really. Yeah, but he's a good, yeah. good friend of mine, Andy. And he, he, he was brilliant. And then he ran off to celebrate. And uh, we couldn't catch him. So I just stopped and turned around and went, went back to uh, for the restart. But again, you know... Bless God, bless him and rest in peace. Uh, Trevor Francis was superb that day. Yeah, uh, yeah. Poor, that was, that was sad news was, this week, wasn't it? It was, it was a shocker. It was a shocker. Um, shocking news. But they they played exceptionally well. And uh, but we our defence again was strong and powerful, and uh, we kept a clean sheet. And, yeah. And it was, uh, again, we went up them stairs for the <laughs> second time, and <laughs> yeah, it was a wonderful feeling. Yeah. I mean, most people ha- would be happy just to go up those steps once and lift a cup and score a goal at Wembley, but twice, yeah. that's just yeah, amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. The ones of football. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember... Many players have done that, Russell, in their Oh, career. I know. I, I just felt that I, I was very fortunate. Yeah. I think yeah. anybody really would feel the same. You know, it's nice nice that you feel that way too, you know, um, that you, you know, you're fortunate because not many people get the opportunity, do they? Let's be honest. No, that's true. That's you know? true. And I, I were, I were, yes, I'm, I were very fortunate to come from where I came from and end up, you know, playing twice at Wembley. Um, yes. In cup finals and winning both times, um, we lost. We lost three semi finals as well over the FA Cup, which we could have had a, a, a great time. We could have five appearances at Wembley. Yes, you could have done. Wasn't to be. One of them would have done me. Two was uh, exceptional. Yeah, that is exceptional. It's a, it's a great, great, great career to talk about, isn't it? Two, two yeah. cup final wins at Wembley, marvelous. Extra yeah, on your mind two, for the rest of your life. Two fantastic teams there were. There were well, two. Manchester City and the European champions, Nottingham Forest. You don't get better yeah. than that, do you? Really, let's be honest. No, no, no. At that no. time, well, they were favourites. 
I can remember seeing Nottingham Forest play in the charity shield. It was a charity shield then in 78 against Ipswich. Because yes. obviously Nottingham Forest won the league uh, yes. and Ipswich won the FA Cup. Yes. And they had this Peter Wiv up front. Uh, oh my God, he was just an incredible player. They, um, I think Forest won 6 0 or something yeah. like that, you know, it's just, or 5 0. Mm. Well, they were just outstanding. Yeah. Well, Peter, well, Peter, we had Peter at Wolves. Yeah. Derek Dugan brought him in. And, oh. uh, and um, well, he didn't, I mean, he wasn't manager, Derek, but he was a player and he recommended to Bill McGarry. And he yeah. Did but Peter really came alive when he went to Nightingale Forest. And obviously, I think he played for Villa as well, but Nottingham yeah. Forest, where he played, he was superb. And he got, I think he got England caps. He did. He did he get didn't England look, caps. He didn't, look, he didn't look that with us, whether it's our game suited him or not, I don't know. But he was a lovely guy as well. Uh, and it was lovely to see him um, mm. performing so well at, at, with, with Forest. And I'll speak to somebody, yeah, absolutely. And I'll speak to somebody yesterday. We're talking about you, Kenny, and um, he's a Wolves supporter. And we're talking about, you know, really, you're, you're such a good player. It's, it's, it was, it's, must be bitterly disappointing as well, but strange also. You never got an England cap yourself. And I often think, you know, with yourself, if you'd have played for somebody like, you know, Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, the FA's favourites, we all know how it is with the England cap, you know, England uh, managerial aspects, you probably would have got a cap. How do you feel? Do you think you would have got a cap if you were another club or maybe overlooked at Wolves? Oh, I can't say. Um, <laughs> I, I got an under 23 cap. Um, it, it it's left side of me here. Yeah. Um, and I'm very proud of that. Yes. I only played six first team games when Sir Alf Ramsey picked me. Um, yes. After that, I was I was supposed to have been. They said I was chosen on the England B tour. Mm. I broke my leg against Norwich, so that was it. That was the last. But yes, it would have been lovely. It would have been a bonus. But I I I I, I was just happy to be playing in Wolves team. You know, of course you uh, were. Week, yeah. Week out and and anything else that came was a bonus. If any, you're Mr. Wolves, really, aren't you? The time spent there is well, incredible. But I, I, I'd spent 16 years there. Mm. Um, Derek Parkin played most. Games. I was second. I'm second highest. Second highest, yeah. Is, but, but I have to thank them for giving me um, a great football life, and yeah. the fans was just wonderful towards me. They, they were, and they still are now, and, they, and it's great to go back up and. Uh, yeah. Oh, they love you. They do love you, don't they? They really do. Oh, they're great. They, they, they were a great fan, great bunch of fans, yeah. Because I've been publishing, well, not publishing, I've, I've been promoting, I should say, this show on social media, as I do. Yeah. And a lot of the Wolves supporters come back and, you know, they're in awe of you. They really are. It's lovely well, to they're, hear. They're, they're terrific. They're, I mean, I, I, we went to one of the, um, the games with my wife was with me. Yeah. And as I came out of the ground, this guy was running. It was raining. It was running fast. Really, and I thought, and he's running right at me. Mm. Uh, and I thought, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> a bit scary. <laughs> and he suddenly stopped and he stripped off his top half. Mm. And there was a picture of me on, on his <laughs> on his arm. Wow. And, and Jane, my wife said, My God, what, what's she, he said, I just wanted to sign it underneath and they could get it. What what what's, what did they do there? Tattooed on. Tattooed on, yeah. Yes. And and then, then he got dressed and went off and ran off again. Oh wow. It was That's a story. It was it was crazy. But yeah, and I I don't know how why, but yeah. But they always make me feel so so welcome when I go back there. And the fans are yes. absolutely terrific. Yeah. And quite rightly so too. I mean you also featured in the uh, 1972 UEFA Cup final, which is of course mm. is now the Europa League, of course, where Wolves now he lost to countryman Tottenham Hotspurs. Uh, from what I recall, the 1972 UEFA Cup final was the very first final of the UEFA Cup. So it was the, the first ever one. Yeah. Um, it was a two-legged affair in those days, of course, as a contest, which Tottenham Hotspur won 3-2 on aggregate. You must have been, uh, it must have been a huge adrenaline rush uh, to, 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 of a match to play in. And of course, bitterly disappointing too. What, what's your memories for that 72 UEFA Cup final well, defeat? From the start, from the you know, from the first round, yes, we I, I the furthest I'd ever been on holiday was Blackpool and Morecambe. <laughs> and here, I, here I was, yes, getting on the plane to go and play, <clears throat> excuse me, in Italy, um, Germany behind the Iron Curtain, yes, and we, we was at a fantastic run, Portuguese, Portugal, 
Um, and there I was, like, only 19, 20, and I'm, I'm seeing parts of the, Europe that I've never never seen before. Yes. Um, so we beat some big teams. We beat Juventus, which was the biggest one. Oh. Of the um, they were huge think, in those days, weren't they, Jim? Oh, massive. And big John Charles, when we went to Italy, he took us around. He, he, he walked us around these shops wow. and he was, he used to bow to him because he was just a legend up there. Oh. Uh, and it was really, really nice to be behind him, pulling him in, you know, this great big giant of a player who was, could play centre-half or centre-forward at Leeds. And uh, that experience was absolutely terrific. Um, and I think, I don't know, it was AC Milan or Milan beat, uh, Tottenham beat them in the semi-final. Mm. And I think if, if, if they'd have lost and we'd have played AC Milan or Milan, I, we, I think we'd have won. Mm. Tottenham, Tottenham uh, has always been our bogey side, right? Right, <laughs> really? Time, yeah, right throughout <laughs> our time. I mean, I, I have nothing again. I love, I love playing at White Hart Lane, the old ground. Mm. Amazing, some amazing players. I, I, shared, I shared a room with Mike England several times in the golf tournaments we had with Teddy Mancini, and some of the stories he was telling us was brilliant. Yeah, so, player, but them two, them, them two games were, yeah, they were tough. I think they. I think they deserved it in the end, although Bill Nicholson said that we were the best side in the second leg. We yeah, lost the, you, you lost the first one at home, didn't you? At Molyneux, yes, and then drew 1-1 one, one at yeah. White Hart Lane, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but, you know, it was it was great to see two English sides playing in a European Cup final you know, or a UEFA Cup. Well, actual fact, it's a claim to fame, isn't it? Because that is the very first all-English European Cup final. Oh, I didn't know. First. I didn't yeah. know that. They had, they, had, they had never been two English sides play each other before okay. that. Okay. All right, so that's so, some claim to fame, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. First Thank ever one. <laughs> that's why I don't mind educating sometimes. But I, I always find myself getting educated. You know, when I speak to um, great, great footballers like yourself, Kenny, you know, it's a good education for me. It really is. You oh, know, so that's good stuff, really. But during yeah. your time at Wolverhampton Wanderers from 1968, 1968 to, to 1984, which included a brief spell, of course, at Seattle Sounders in, in 1992. And there, of course, you played with the great Alan Hudson as well. We're talking about that earlier on. Oh, yeah. Terrific man. Terrific oh, player. Fantastic. Terrific player. I, he, he was a type of player that I always, you know, dreamt of playing with. And we had we got one one guy that played similar to him, was Willie mm. Carr, we, we got from Coventry. Yes. And he's still he's a big pal of mine. And uh, but we he, when he came, he reminded me a lot because Alan wanted the ball, whether he was marked or whether he wasn't marked, whether he was unmarked or whatever. Mm. And he always wanted, he, he, you know, he used to say, well, just lend me the ball and I'll give it you back. <laughs> uh, and, and he did. Uh, and that's what Willie Carr, Willie Carr does that. Yeah. Uh, and, um, but then I met, I played with him. And in the same team, he was at Seattle, he was superb. Um, and uh, I got a lot of respect for him. But we, when I got there, um, I didn't really want to go, but the, our club, Wolves, was on, on the downer. Uh, fin uh, financially, we were in trouble, and yes. um, and I, I the, the manager at the time, uh, Ian Greaves, came in on a short basis to try and keep us in the first division, which we didn't survive. And he wanted to get me out away from the club uh, ASAP because the club was in real dire straits uh, and far worse than what I thought they were. Mm. So he got me out to Seattle, and I, we spent three three months, three and a half months there. And yeah, uh, not a bad place to spend the, time at. Yeah, yeah. And we, we got to a soccer ball final. Which wow. Was, and I scored overtime goal in Fort Lauderdale to bring them back to Seattle. And I scored the goal that took Fantastic. us to the soccer ball. And that's where I met the great man himself, Pele. Ah, oh, oh. so Pele, I mean, what a star. Oh, I mean, heavens. I've got a photograph oh. and I, oh, I do a treasure it, a treasure it. Oh, bless him. What a lovely man he was too. A fantastic footballer, but actually a very decent uh, decent gentleman as well, wasn't yeah. he, Pele? Oh, he was, he was terrific. A terrific yeah. guy. I mean, he didn't know me from Adam, but, but he, he came up and took me hand, shook me hand again. He's all staff. had a photograph taken with him and uh, I thought, wow, you know, kid from Bradford and I'm yeah. seeing the best players ever, you know. <laughs> And he had a special relationship, didn't he, with the great now late, of course, uh, Mr. Moore. Yes. So he had a great relationship, didn't he, with well, Bobby? Yeah, yeah they, they they had a tremendous amount of uh, respect for each other. They certainly did. And they all did. from that 1970 World Cup match, I think, wasn't it, in Mexico? Yes. Just yeah. um, unbelievable True. game. Amazing. Unbelievable Absolutely game. amazing. Yeah. So, so it was uh, quite successful over there. And, and we, but yes. we, lost, we lost in the final 1-0. Um, and then I came back to Wolves. And spent another couple of years there. And of course, you left 
left in uh, left left Wolves after making some four hundred and sixty six appearances. I think it was five hundred and seventy four. Oh, it's five hundred seventy four. You see, we you do your research. It's not always <laughs> right, is it? <laughs> no, I've got a shirt up here that tells me that as well. Absolutely brilliant. No, that's fantastic. Thanks for, for correcting me there. And <laughs> as you said earlier on, it was the the second most appearances any player has yeah. made in Wolves history. And I bet I've got this wrong as well. And with eighty nine goals, I think it's probably over a hundred, wasn't it? 114. Yeah, there you yeah. are. So the information on this particular <laughs> side. Be full, be <laughs> yeah, well, you've got to make sure. I can't deduct your goals from you, Kenny, can I? Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so you were and still are a Wolves legend, Kenny, aren't you? You really are. Well, that, the, the, the fans talk to you about that. Yeah, I mean, I just do, I, I got paid to do uh, my job and I tried to do it the best I could. And I, I always give one, try to give 100%. Um, Absolutely. Well, I know I did that because my dad always said do that. He said, just listen to what people say and work hard. And that's what I've always tried to do. And, and I, I was surrounded with some good players as well. You were. And of course, Wolves did go on a bit of the decline. I'm just going off my chart now mm. because I do this sometimes. And they ended up in the old fourth division. I can remember in those days, because Aldershot, my side, were, were traditionally a fourth division side. Yeah. And they 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 just scraped, Aldershot just scraped into the playoffs one year and Wolves were just narrowly missed out on natural promotion. And of course, Aldershot then beat Bolton Wanderers in the semi-final and met Wolves in the playoff final. Right. It wasn't at Wembley then. I think that it was held at Wembley the following year. But Aldershot beat Wolves 2-0 at the recreation ground. And, and I remember it well because I was there and I had a friend who was a Wolves supporter in the Wolves end. And then Aldershot went up to Molyneux and won one there and went through 3 0 and got promoted. Yeah. That's yeah. so disappointing for Wolves because they were about, I don't know, 12, 16 points ahead of Aldershot. Yeah, I was um I was looking from afar. I was at Coventry City uh, yeah. at, that, at that time. Um because they were right on the edge of going bust. They um, were. And so they couldn't afford to keep me. So um Bobby Gould was manager at, at Coventry. Mm. And he took me there and I had a two-year deal. To go to Coventry City from eighty four to eighty six, but during that period, you, you're right about about Wolves with the um, yeah. all the shot game, and it was sad for me to see them going down and down and down. Yeah, not even expecting it so quickly after play after winning the League Cup in nineteen eighty. Exactly, it it's was a, it, it was a, it was um, a real shock. Yeah, yeah, it was. it was an awful awful period and an awful time for Wolves. You know, definitely. Then you mm. finally left Wolves in 1984. I think you just mentioned on a yeah. on a free transfer. I understand to Coventry City, yeah. and you know, with 16 years at Wolves, you must have it must have been a very difficult transfer to accept in so many ways, Kenny, mustn't it? But as we all know, good things must end at some point. How did you feel at the time, Kenny, leaving Wolverhampton? Well, it brought me up. It, it yes. brought me up. Um, Jim Barron was a caretaker manager, and yes, although they offered me a contract, it was it was like. Um, Take it or leave it situation. Mm. Um, didn't give me any feeling that they wanted me to stay. Really, that mm. that was my feeling. And so I went home and spoke to my wife, um, and we talked about it. And um, Bobby Go, I, I actually I'd been offered the Swindon Town player manager's job, mm. and uh, so I turned that down to go to Coventry and stay in the first division for an extra two years. But yes, it broke my heart when I left Wolves. I mean, that Wolves always was and always will be in. Your, your main back. club, I, without a doubt, without a doubt, yeah. they, they gave me a career that I never thought I would have. Yeah, and the fans supported me, which I never thought I would get. Um, growing up, do. but I'm still, yeah, I went, I and I did, I did miss it, and I, and it was sad for me to see him going down and down and down. Yeah. Definitely, I quite quite agree. And in 2011, you were actually inducted into the Wolverhampton Wanderers Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, final recognition, which is absolutely amazing and an amazing achievement, Kenny. Which you must remember with huge heart a truly memorable career at Wolves. I mean, Hall of Fame, that's amazing, isn't it? It is is that again, that's one of um, that's one of the biggest surprises of my career in a way. Yeah. Um to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. But a lot of people say, Well, look, you you, you know, you you're second player, most appearances. I said, Yes, I know that, but um it was my job. It was my job to play. But they recognize it and of course. My wife always said, you don't believe in yourself enough. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, it was lovely. To, it was it was lovely to be inducted into all the fame. And I, I know and Bobby Charlton was always my, my, my favourite player growing up. And he, he was supposed to come down. Apparently, they were getting a surprise for me. 
Oh, really? And Bobby was supposed to come down and present uh, a nice little plaque to me, but he was he was, he went very well. But he got he put a guy in the car and he drove down, and I've got um, a nice letter from him signed by Bobby. Uh, oh, on lovely! The, and that was that that brought tears to my eyes. I have to say that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, and it was a, a wonderful gesture from him. For him, a lovely gesture indeed. A beautiful yeah. gesture from a great it man. Was. Yeah, That's absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. But life does go on, and Coventry, yep. a Coventry City player you now were, I guess you said earlier, in the English First Division and a two-year stay. Now, correct me if I got this wrong as well, Kenny, with 47 appearances of four goals? Something like that. Yeah, OK. I thought I was going to get that wrong as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do get things wrong. You've just got a lot about yeah. it, haven't you, really? So what do, yeah. you, what do you remember most about your time at Coventry City? Well, they were a big club, weren't they, then? They were... uh, yeah, I mean, they're a wonderful club. Um, and Bobby brought, you know, players in there that Steve Grizzly, which is the goalkeeper, he's been there. I think he's been there ever since, Stevie. Um, Peter Barnes came in. Uh, who else? They, 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 Stuart Pierce was there. Stuart Pierce as well, yeah. We had a fantastic team. Yeah. But we found ourselves in a relegation battle. And we got to the last game of the season. We had to beat Everton at home to stay in the first division. Uh, and they were champions. But what had happened with them, Andy Gray was playing for them. Uh, yeah. uh, they, they left a few of the players out. But unfortunately for Norwich, they, I think it was Norwich, that they, they we beat them 4-1 because they had a weakened team. Yes. Norwich got relegated and we stayed in. And I remember Mike yeah. Shannon saying, there's got to be a steward's inquiry here. You know? <laughs> I, can understand, I can understand him from that, you know, from his yeah. point of view, that, that, that they only played half the team. But, They'd been away celebrating in Spain. Uh, well, he was playing for Norwich City, wasn't he, Mike Shannon, then, I yeah. believe? Yeah. Yeah, and Big Sir Regis was with us, and he, he nodded in a couple of great goals, and uh, and we managed to stay stay up. And then we had another year, I had another year there. And, you know, I'd lost three FA Cup semi-finals, mm. and I left, and Coventry went on to win the Cup. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd have stayed on, you'd have had your well, FA Cup know. win as well. But yeah, I know, I know. But I was pleased for them. I, I yeah, was of course pleased. you were. Of course you were. You then left Coventry City in 1988 for a last hurrah as a football player with a two-year spell at Bristol Rovers. Uh, yeah. You know, it must have felt disappointing, Kenny, knowing your career as a top-class football player was, you know, coming to an end, but not quite there just yet. But an abrupt end it was in February 1988 uh, when you broke your leg for a second yeah. time, it sounds, uh, playing against Sunderland. Yeah. Not the end you envisaged, Kenny, really, was it? It was, no, nasty, no, it, was, um, it, was it was a tackle that should never have happened. Was it the same day. leg? No, no. Uh, yeah, um, no, it was a right, that was a left one he'd done. Um, I broke me right one at Wolves. Yes. Um, scoring again. I scored a th it was an equaliser against Norwich when Sullivan, the fullback, came in to black, try and block it. It was a complete accident. Yeah, and I got there just before him, and um, this one was a bit different. Um, More, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't a very nice friendly. Tackle. Yeah, I, oh. I yeah. and um, so I was assistant manager then with Jerry Francis. But when I went to Bristol Rovers, Bobby Gold had got that job, so he took me down as player man, as player coach. Mm. Uh, then Bobby moved on to Wimbledon. Jerry Francis took over as manager. I became his assistant, and. A little story is that when I broke my leg, I never really got back to it. Fitness, no. And I knew my career was gone. I was 37. I knew my career was finished. But he put me on the bench against Chesterfield. And he, he, about five, ten minutes from the end, he said, do you fancy going on? I said, yeah, I'd go on. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and um, not knowing that actually my, that was my last game against yeah. Chesterfield. But my debut for Bradford was against Chesterfield. It's funny how life works out sometimes. Well, it right? works. Yeah, it's incredible. It in First amazing. and last games against yeah. the same football yeah. club. It's just really yeah. bizarre, isn't it? But a great story. Yeah. Yeah. So you had your last five minutes. Yes, I had me five minutes. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and then that was your launch, then, wasn't it? You know, your move into football management, as you just just said, yeah. uh, where you remained with Bristol Rovers as an assistant to Jerry Francis, where you won the old third division title in 1990. So you're still winning things. Yeah. So success in management too, Kenny. You know, you've yeah, moved yeah. into success as, as a manager. Fantastic. Well, I learned a lot from Jerry. Uh, oh, Jerry learned a lot from many, many good managers that he played with at QPR and England. 
Yeah. Um, so I, I watched how he worked and um, he used to live in Bagshot and of course I were local. So I spent most of the time with the place during the week and um, Jerry used to tell me what to do and do this. You know, that was great experience for me. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, we won the league. We beat Bristol City uh, at Bath. We used to play at Bath rather than in Bristol. Mm. And uh, we beat them 3-0 and we won the league and they, they went on to get promotion as well. But that, that gave us a championship. So oh, fantastic. I, yeah, so it all changed. It just it was, and then it, kept, it went on from there. And then in 1990, yeah, um, oh, yeah, um, manager spell at Warsaw. Yes, that's I went there, but they'd been relegated two years on the on, the, and that was that was a very very tough baptism into management. I'm afraid. Oh, absolutely, because in 1993 you did take Warsaw to the old uh, Division Three playoffs after finishing yeah. fifth, I think, in the league, but the yeah. semi final. Um, wasn't the semi-final you dreamed of, really? I mean, you lost no. nine three on aggregate to aggregate to Crew Alexander. Well, we beat them twice in the league, oh um, man away. And so I used to play with three at the back, and I thought, well, what's the point of trying to change it? And we went to the first leg was at Crew, mm. and my two centre halves had a nightmare. Almost, we had a nightmare, mm. and we were we were three or four down in no time, and we lost. I think we five one. So on the second leg, I said, right, got in the dressing room and I said to the fans and I, through, through the media that we were going to go all out. You know, it's either we're going to get the, the goals that puts us back in the game or, or we're going to get battered. Um, yes. So we went 1-0 up and the fans were right behind us. We was absolutely on top of them and then they broke away. And, so, and then, yeah, as you know, the the, the score didn't, uh, it didn't go down well. Um, but we give it our best shot. You gave your best shot, and yeah, you know, so yeah. not a return to Wembley as a manager, though, Kenny. You didn't get that no, chance no, to no. go back to the old grounds and, yeah. and play in a playoff final. So, yeah. um, which is which is a shame, but yeah. you know that's life, isn't it? That's life, of course, of course. But uh, and then um, I had a fallout and a dispute with the manager, with the chairman, uh, and I left. And um, I took a year out. I was exhausted. Yeah, I was I was by myself. I didn't have a coach or, or assistant or anything. So. You know, when you got 20 odd players a day, um, it took its toll on me. It would do. Um, and I wanted a year out and I took a year out. What did you, what did you do in that year? Just relax and play well, golf? Well, yeah, I did. I, I started, I play, I, I like the game of golf. Um, my, my son was a professional. Um, so I was able to spend a bit of time and my wife played. So, oh, I, nice. So during that interim uh, rest period, um, I started to play a little bit more golf. And then Cardiff City came knocking on the door. And oh, I went back. I've got a long I'm into the fire. <laughs> yeah, I've got quite a long question here because Cardiff City opened up all sorts of forks in my mind. So I've got quite a long, long briefing here to give you uh, because yeah. it, it looked like you were Cardiff City manager for three years, but there's a lot of interim things going on. So you yeah. took took over as manager of Cardiff City from Eddie May, I believe, in right. the summer of 1995. You moved That's upstairs. Yeah. to a director of football role uh, with, with the arrival of Phil Neal, of course, the ex-Liverpool player, the yeah. following year. However, Phil Neal's time in charge was brief, departing after only a couple of months to become assistant to Steve Coppel at Manchester City. That's correct. So, yeah, you took over the team once again yeah. uh, before handing the reins over to Russell Osman. But then yeah. Russell Osman's period in charge was short uh, yeah. was short and 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 ended in December 1970, uh, sorry 1996 yeah. you took over the team affairs for the third time before being replaced by Frank Burrows in yeah. February 1998 a bit of a topsy turvy time at Cardiff Kent. it was you know, it was I, 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 yeah um it was the, the, I had I did resign before we brought um Frank Burrows in um I'd been threatened yes with a terrible letter. Oh, that's not very nice. Um, no, from France. Um, and that included my family. Oh, shocking. And I, so I rang the chairman on the way. I said, I, I, I can't. I said, I don't mind having the criticism. I mean, we, we were, we were mid table. We were doing yeah. all right. I was trying yeah. to pick a team, like, get a team together and build a team with no money. Um, and then this, this letter came in. I tore it up, put it in the bin. And Key and, and Joan Hill, who was um, the, the chairman's girlfriend, or partner, um, she picked it up out of the out of the waste paper bin while I mm. was out training, put it together, and she had a detective following me for three months. Wow! And I didn't know that. 
That's incredible. I didn't know that. I know. And and so I, I rang the chair and said, look, I can't I can't put my, my family in this uh, position. So I resigned. Dangerous. Um, Scary. He wouldn't let me he wouldn't let me um leave the club. So I I, I moved into the direction of football. Mm. Um so I worked with him. But then when Frank Burroughs came in, he didn't want to work with me. He just wanted no. to work with the chairman. So there was no room for me. And then they changed my job description. And I signed a five-year deal, and um, I negotiated to leave, and I, I left. I mean, I love Cardiff City. They're fantastic fans. Mm. But some poor, you know, some guy decided to to write this letter, which which it shook me and it shook my family. Um, well, it would do. I just want that. Just one bad egg, isn't there? That spoils the the rest. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I go. I, I went back many years later when I used to work for the Premier League um, assessing the uh, officials, and they were very nice to me. They were very good. Oh, that's good. That's good. So no hard feelings as such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's one of them things. It is one of them things. But you did return to management with non-league Hensford Town in September 2001. And despite rescuing the club for a poor start and preserving their place in their division, you were dismissed at the end of the season. It it seems a little harsh, Kenny, but then this does happen in football, doesn't it? Well, uh, yeah, one of the directors who was a manager there was my accountant. So I, I I was in I was in Wales where my my daughter used to live and we yes. had a young a young Tom over there born over there and I was coming back from there when I got the phone call from from this chap and um, he said would you come and help me? he said we're bottom of the league with thirteen points adrift and we can't afford to get relegated we need you to come in and and help us so I said okay I'll I'll come and help you. And my yeah. first game was against a team that was unbeaten, top of the league. <laughs> and I'm thinking, my God, you know, what a great baptism this is. It's an <laughs> well, ba- baptism of fire, by the sounds of I it. Know. But we beat them 2-1. Oh, well. Yeah, and um, <laughs> the fans had fallen out with the club. So the relationship wasn't good. Mm. So I brought Barry Powell in with me to help me, which is the first time I'd had an assistant or a coach with me. I was always alone. And that was like Evan, and he was great. So we got the fans and we got the club together, and suddenly we we now got a good response from the fans towards the club, and the club good response towards the fans. Yes. And we had to go to Newport Isle of Wight last game this season to keep them up, and we won one nil, and we kept him up. So me and Barry then had a the man the chairman rang me, yes. the meeting, so we thought, oh good, you know, maybe he wants us to sign a contract, or, and he said, no, you both fired. I mean, that's, just, that's an incredible story. Barry just looked, he went, what? What and was his just, logic? What was his got, logic? Yeah, Barry got changed and, and ran off, went off, and that was it. And I, I had to get a little bit more yes. from him. Yes. He never really he never really told me the real reasons. Um, but that 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 was it. And yeah. And then I I I had um, I applied for the Forest Green uh job because that was available at the time but the chairman yeah. said well why should we employ somebody who's just managed to stay in the league and i thought wait a minute oh. I, they were 13 <laughs> points adrift you know uh, and i built them up and got them back onto onto yeah. the lad then so that never happened so i and then i started to work for the press association uh, and then the premier league came in they were doing a new initiative um going along with the uh Assessing the officials, you know. Yes. And I spent 17 years with them. That's fantastic, isn't it? It was. It was. I loved every minute of it. I was. I was back watching f- Premier League football, like first division football. Yes. Um, working with all the top referees. Um, I had a fantastic relationship with the referees. I would wear back when he went to the World Cup. I kept in contact with him. Um, showing him out of body shape and stuff like that. Uh, I did a presentation that, that that went around the country, and I loved every minute of it. And then I got a phone call two minutes, two years ago, two minute phone call saying, thank you very much, but we we don't want you no more. <laughs> <laughs> so I retired. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quite interesting you're working with the referees because my next guest is actually on the show as a referee. Oh, is he? And so, yes. Right. So Alan Snoddy, which I'll do a, an intro to right. towards the end right. of the uh, end of the show. Um, yes. But yeah, it's an interesting, interesting life um, in football. It really is. Yeah. But of course, I've called this show Seasons of My Life. For a reason, um, tell us a little uh, a little about the inspiration behind your autobiography, Seasons right. of My Life, Kenny. Because you know it's, it's, it looks like a fabulous book; it really does. 
It um, it all happened because now with my grandchildren now, I've got my son, Rod, has got a, a son, and my daughter has got three children. Yes. And um, growing up, my mum and dad never told me about my grandparents. Uh, and so I sat with my wife and I said, look, I think I'm going to do something because I want them to know what their grand... And they know I played football, but they don't yes. really know my life uh, and where I came from and how I grew up and how it all happened. So I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put something down in paper. And she said, well, why don't you do a book and call, no it, seasons, and call it Seasons of My Life? Yeah. And I thought, OK. And it took me two years to put it together. But it, it all started because I didn't know my grandparents. <laughs> I've done mine too. <laughs> oh, brilliant. brilliant. I, I think I've seen, I, you know, I haven't read the book, but I've seen that. I've seen the advertise somewhere. Yeah. But before you before you got in touch with me, it was. Yes. But that, yeah. that's 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 the reason why I, I went along and, and I wanted my grandchildren when I've gone to read out where I was born, how I was brought up, where I was brought up, how my career sort of functioned, and, um, and that's how it all started. And that's so a, we, we got stuck into it. Um, we had some laughs. We had some downers. We had yes, all you do. different things. And I, I've had two. I had first print went, and then the second print they've all went. They all went. So it was um, quite therapeutic to talk about my life and my career. And uh, now my grandchildren knows exactly what their grandfather did. You know, absolutely um, right. That, 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 that's what inspired me to do to do it. Do you know, I was um, the same with mine. My, my, I've got to mention it, my autobiography, My Way. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> um, good. Good it's, a, it's a good story. Um, yeah. But I did it initially because um, I wanted to leave, leave a legacy for my children and their children and so on yeah. and so forth. That was the inspiration for me. So it's the yeah. same as yourself, Kenny. Absolutely. Wonderful. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, as I say, but when same say, what does your granddad do? I said, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, my, I dad think... lost, my dad lost his dad. He was just, he was the only the only son uh, or and, well the only child. Yes. And his dad died very early, oh, and he sorry. had a chance to go to Port Vale. Really? He, he wouldn't leave his mum because the, he was just the only one. And my first dipping kit that he bought me was a Port Vale one. <laughs> <laughs> White with a black V, you know. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. but, but Port Vale. That's all. I, that's all I, I didn't know. I mean, my dad was too young for me to to really get to know him. Mm. As a person, either you know, because That's he's sad. just a dad, you know. Yeah, no, exactly. I, you know, and uh, when I was seventeen, and uh, forty seemed a, a big age. Oh. But then when I became forty, I knew, realised then how how young he was, you know. Exactly. Um, but, um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I can remember turning forty. And I got quite depressed momentarily, but now, yeah. of course, all those years have disappeared, and yeah, uh, later years now. And if you look back, you think, oh, that wasn't so bad, really, for being forty. But at yeah, the time. Yeah. It did yeah, seem, yeah. seem as, as if you were aging, as they say, but um, yeah, 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 incredible, really. But my like, my autobiography, like you, took two years to write, yeah. and um, I did mine through the COVID years when I was living in Mexico City. I was out there. I left the country. <laughs> I went to Mexico City, and wow. that's where I wrote my book. I used to write my um, write to uh, write all these. Uh, downloads from my mind in emails and send them off to uh my co co-writer yeah. ghostwriter yeah. edward cousins lake who actually was on the show the other week yeah. um and uh he did all the typing up and did everything did it all well and made it into a book so like you two years yeah yeah absolutely well we have tim nash was the, the reporter or writer yeah. who put it together with my wife wonderful he, he used to come back down from the business because i live in the cotswolds now so he used to yeah. drive down. And I'd put a chicken in the oven and I'd do all the cooking while they did all the ah, examining each other and putting it, put all what I'd done into yes. play, you know. That's fantastic, isn't it? Making it? Yeah, making it sound good. Did you have a forward for your book, Kenny? Yeah, uh, Robert Plant. Oh, Led nice. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Well, That's was, a good one. He was out on tour somewhere and I, I've got to know him through because he's president of Wolves. Yes. And, um, I got, and, and I got to know him right, quite well and... He said I was one of his favourite players, but I don't believe him really. But <laughs> uh, so I sent him a text, and within two hours, he sent me something back that I could yeah. put in the book. And um, it was amazing. He said, "If you want to change at any time, just do it." I didn't. I left it. Left I it. Left it word for word. Yeah. And John Richards did the foreword for me. Wonderful. And he That's was. Really nice. He said it was a pleasure to do. So I, yeah, I would a bit cheeky probably, but I, but it was lovely. And and of course. My niece, which is Jane's brother's niece, is Amelia Clark, the actress. Yeah. So she's in the book as well. Where she she had a photograph taken with her and um, superb. 
Yeah, it, 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 it's a lovely book. It's, it's not, I'm not. I don't mean to read, but it's good. It's a good book with all my family in there. Yeah, so good you stories know, too. I should that, imagine that, that's the important thing for me. Is yes, to read about me. Yeah, yeah, and no, that's, that's that's very good, Kenny. Very good. And of course, Mr. Plant. You know, do you know him very well? I'd love to get him on this show. Actually, <laughs> you know, I don't know where he is. This bit of diversity. <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> He's a terrific, terrific guy. Yes, no, absolutely. Led Zeppelin, uh, great, great rock band, weren't they? Oh, they are. Yeah, well, I, put, I put the sixties on in the morning and listened to the sixties, and uh, he was on this morning. Oh, amazing. brilliant. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, fantastic, isn't it? Really, he was a young chap then, though. He was, yeah, not so young now. Like all of us, you know, we're all we all get older, don't we? The space we do, we do, fact of life. But there we go, you know. So, what does the future hold for you now, Kenny? Any other interests, hobbies? We talked about golf briefly. Well, I play golf. Yeah, I, I, I play. I play, but I um no, I, I it's most of my time is taken now with the grandchildren. Yes, the, the, the both the, the two girls that we've got, they they've got horses and they do the jumping. They do. All sorts of different things. Uh, they're doing really, really well. Uh, Tom, my grandson, he's 21 now. Um, I play a little bit of golf with him when he's available. Fantastic. My other grandson is Jasper, um, who's now 16. He's left school. Um, lovely kid. I, I play golf with him. And my son, as I say, was a, was a pro golfer. So we we get some good social um, activities together, uh, particularly the golf side of it. My wife plays golf. Yes. Um but now, now, now the management and the working, I can I, I can play a lot more now. So yeah, yeah that's, there's still a lot to do. I do gardening work. I do a lot of gardening. Uh, yeah, I help a lot of people out with their garden. Uh, so it keeps me active, keeps me fit. Someone once said to me once, um, "Don't retire, Russell, because you'll you'll always say, how did I find the time to work?'" Exactly. <laughs> you know, and that, that's, that's exactly that's true. That is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't intend on retiring at all, really. I do. I, I, I have a lifestyle I like, and I just need to carry on working, really. But you know, yeah. keeps keeps you active and young, doesn't it? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, the kids. I mean, they're they're that age where they'll say, "Grampy, take me in." Grampy, do this. Grampy, yes. do that. And I said, "I'm going to change my name." <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's it's lovely. They want to spend time with it in my company, and then it's lovely. Oh, and they always yeah. give me big hugs and kisses, and lovely. Uh, and, and that's that's kind of life I like. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's, it's nice life to have, you know. Yeah. After a perfect, uh, well, I'll say perfect, perfect footballing career in many ways. Yeah, yeah. Down with do, family. We do some Q and A's. Uh, me, John Richards, and Steve Daly. We do theatre Q and A's and stuff like that. So oh. that keeps us active. Um, they want to celebrate the fifty years uh, in in um, February. Uh, you know, winning the League Cup. Uh, so we we get quite. I get quite a lot of. Um, uh, request to do that kind of stuff, and it's great. So I, I can sit for hours talking about <laughs> about football, not just me, but about football itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once once it starts, it's hard to stop, yeah, isn't it? Really, it's hard to stop. Yeah, yeah. I think you said to me on Monday when we had a quick chat that your wife says, "Oh, Kenny, you you, you talk and talk and talk forever." <laughs> she says, "You remember what you did in the 39th minute 40 years ago, but you can't tell me what you did last week." Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's a classic, isn't it? It is a yeah. classic. So uh, it happens in all our lives, doesn't it? It really does. Well, you know? it does so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been very, very fortunate, Russell. Uh, I've had a, I've had a very, very lucky, um, great career. You have yeah. a very good career indeed. And as always, because I've just looked at the clock, <laughs> you know, we've killed an hour pretty much already. You're kidding? No. Wow. And. Wow. Um, you know, so as always on this show, you know, we could talk forever, Kenny, as there's yeah. so much more to talk about. I know there is. Um, so I'm, I'm going to thank you for coming on to the show and talking about your your professional life in football. I have to say it's been a huge pleasure as always. And as always, the pleasure is all mine. Um, thank you. I much wanna... appreciate it. Absolutely. But stay on. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up, but stay on and okay. have a quick chat afterwards okay. um, about some other 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 things as well. So no yeah, it's a great, the great Kenny Hibbert on the show today, folks. It's been a marvellous, marvellous show, some great conversations. And the next episode on the World of Lord Russell podcast show is A View from the Man in Black, where my special guest will be Alan Snoddy, MBE, the former FIFA referee, where we talk to Alan's We'll talk about Alan's illustrious life as a top FIFA referee, where Alan officiated at the 1986 and 1990 World Cup, uh, World Cup competitions in both Mexico and Italy. As always, I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the, in, on the inside. So until then, it's au revoir from him and au revoir from me.